Coming up on Look Today, well, the Hometown versus Heroin Conference brought many of the area's officials and leaders together to discuss combating the heroin and opioid epidemic. I've got details. And we have a story on the life expectancy of racehorses. Plus, Hudson Headwater Health Network receives a grant. I've got those details. It's all ahead on Look Today. Welcome everyone, I'm Jay Hood Jackson and this is Look Today. Tonight's program, I sit down with Lois Celeste. She's the Executive Director of the Saratoga Senior Center. She's here to talk about upcoming fundraiser for the center. It's a gala, it's called the Taste of Travers. I also sit down with Alexander Lombard. Now he's the President and CEO of the Lake George Music Festival and we're joined by Babora Kalarova. And she's the artistic director of the festival. They're here to talk about an exciting 10-day long concert series which starts on Monday. Plus, we've got your weather for the Tri-North Counties. But first, these headline stories. Well, in our lead story, the Hometown versus Heroin Conference was held yesterday at SUNY Adirondack in Queensbury. Warren and Washington counties are working closely together to combat this epidemic. A team of important officials and leaders came together for a roundtable discussion on how to provide the proper health assistance that the addicts need, as opposed to criminalizing them. Well, according to Warren County Sheriff Bud York, his department's biggest priority is to arrest the serious heroin distributors in the area. Now, for the average user who has become addicted, a proper support system also really needs to be in place. And we spoke to Bud about the socioeconomic circumstances of those who are addicted. Well, I, I think they're generally drawn to the drug, uh, socially, uh, peer group pressure. I, I think that's where, where most of them are drawn to it, you know, and I don't think there's any uh, socioeconomic backgrounds that it, that it doesn't cover. It, it, covers, uh, it covers people who are well-to-do, it covers uh, poor people, it covers everybody. And that's a problem. It touches every segment of our population. Now for Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, collaboration and communication are two key elements in battling this epidemic. And she also believes that small businesses can play a major role in this battle by offering better health support systems to their employees. And on a federal level, Elise Stefanik has helped push for more funding to go toward treatment plans. Well, we also spoke to the Congresswoman about the conference. I put together this uh, roundtable discussion along with our uh, district attorneys and our sheriffs from Warren, Washington County, and stakeholders from the treatment community and the business community. At the federal level, we have passed the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, uh, which was uh, a number of bills focused on prevention, treatment, and funding that is necessary to support efforts. I think what I've learned today, and uh, as I've visited and participated in discussions in Essex County with their local initiatives, Initiative, hearing from some of the stakeholders in the hometown versus heroin is this needs to be a collaborative approach it needs to be a comprehensive approach sharing information and sharing best practices of what works Wow. now many of the drug trafficking routes as you might expect come from New York City and they come up into our upstate region now according to local police the heroin and opioid crisis is not declining suppliers are constantly replaced after others are arrested and the general consensus that was reached at the conference is that health and support programs must outweigh the allure of addiction. Now, if support is not there, obviously, demand for heroin and opioids will increase. And as a consequence, the crime rate will go up. Well, we had the opportunity to talk to Tony Jordan. He's a Washington County DA. Uh, it's a collaborative effort of, of all the people that are here today, the Hometown versus Heroin. The uh, district attorneys, the other sheriff's offices, state police, um, you know, we've come together in a group that usually you don't see working together and uh, for one common goal. And I think we've done a pretty good job of, of getting the word out, getting awareness uh, and helping with the stigma. It's, it's a big issue. Now, as you can tell, we spent quite a time on this story. And in the future, we will continue to do more about 
this epidemic. And I want to note one other thing too, you know, we only have so much time within the broadcast to be able to do these on-screen interviews, but I want to note that Kate Hogan was there also. Uh, Kate is a DA for Warren County and is very involved in this topic, and so is Jeff Murphy, who's the Washington County Sheriff, and they were also in attendance at this conference. Switching from news to weather, today saw overcast skies and some rain. Let's see how the rest of the week is shaping up for a more detailed look at our weather. We're going to head to the Glens Falls Weather Center for a look at your first forecast. Back to the news. Well, two and a half weeks into the Saratoga racetrack season, and seven horses have died. Four horses died from catastrophic race injuries, and two had to be euthanized due to training injuries. Now, the latest one suffered from severe head trauma after flipping over during a race and had to be put down. Now, we know that we all get caught up in talking about the glamour of the racing season, but we think it's important to also note that this is a dangerous sport for horses and for the jockeys. So throughout this month, we're going to continue to update you on a lot of different events and issues at Saratoga Racecourse. Now, on August 15th, the racecourse, by the way, will be giving away free beach towels along with free admission. That's a big deal each year. All right, in other news, the Hudson Headwaters Health Network has received a $55,000 grant the grant comes from Stewart Shops and the Dake Family Foundation. The grant money will go toward buying handheld ultrasound devices used to diagnose patients' conditions. Now, the devices will initially be used at the health center on Broad Street in Warrensburg and also the health center near West Mountain. Up next, I sit down with Lois Celeste. She's the executive director of the Saratoga Senior Center. She's here to talk about an upcoming fundraiser for the center. Not your ordinary fair, this is a gala right before Travers called Taste of Travers. And I also sit down with Alexander Lombard. He's a president and CEO of the Lake George Music Festival. And we're joined by Babora Kalarova. And she's the artistic director of the festival and violinist. They're here to talk about an exciting 10-day concert series that starts on Monday. But first, if you see news happening, you want to share a story idea. How about join us for an interview? Give us a call on the hotline. The number is 798-8000. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Look Today. Now, I've got a couple of lookouts tonight. Uh, the first one goes to Congresswoman Stefanik and everyone who participated in that roundtable discussion yesterday. Now our cameras are up there and we didn't get it back here in time for yesterday's news, but I'm glad because we were able to feature a lot more time about that conference in tonight's news. And we're, as I told you, you know, we're going to keep you updated on anything regarding this epidemic. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, we have a wonderful way to end the show tonight. Uh, in the interview today I did with Bobora and with Alexander, I asked Bobora if she had brought her violin along, and she did. So tonight, uh, we're going to uh, close the program featuring Babora Kalarova and an excerpt she's doing from a Paganini piece. Uh, by the way, the website to get tickets for this festival is LakeGeorgeMusicFestival.com. LakeGeorgeMusicFestival.com. And to take you out, Babora. Thank <laughs> you.